y'all and welcome to today's video. We are going to get ready together, but it's not going to be so much about that. We are going to be talking about the strangest, weirdest makeup launches that we've seen over the past year or so. We're going to be talking about just, just those releases that were like, what is going on here? Who did this and what for? We're going to talk about that and I'm going to be getting ready while we go. I asked y'all over on Instagram what were some of the just craziest launches and y'all let me know which ones you thought we should talk about. So that's what we'll do and if you're new here, hey, my name is Heather. Makeup makes me happy here at my channel. We don't try to be perfect. We just want to have a good time with our makeup, whatever that means. I do upload lots of new videos every single week. So I hope that you'll subscribe before you leave today. But we have a lot to talk about. I'm going to zoom y'all in a little bit. We'll do makeup, we'll roast these releases, and we'll have a good time. So let's jump into it. Okay, so I've zoomed y'all in a bit because I want you to be able to see me apply the makeup as we talk about these crazy new launches. And I know I'm not going to be talking about the makeup every step of the way. So let me just kind of tell you what I'm going to use really quick. I'm going to be using the Glow Recipe Strawberry BHA Pore Smooth Blur Drops, a new favorite primer. I'm going to be mixing my NYX HD uh, Corrector in CW12, the green one, with my Too Faced Born This Way Matte 24 Hour Foundation in Warm Beige. I just need to make this a little more green. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my um, Born This Way Concealer from Too Faced in the shade Latte. I'm going to set my under eyes in the kind of center of my face with my NARS Soft Matte Powder in Bay. And then I'm going to finish everything off with my Sephora Micro Smooth Multitasking Baked Face Powder. So let's talk about the thing that y'all commented most to me. So I put a little question box up on my Instagram stories and asked y'all like, like what stands out? And the thing that got commented more than anything else was this whole Fenty Beauty ketchup gloss thing. You see the photos. I'm going to be popping up photos as we go so that in case you're not familiar with these releases, you'll kind of know what's going on. Now, every Sunday on my channel, I have a series called Judging New Makeup. It's heavily inspired by Samantha March's Will I Buy It series. So we just talk about the new releases. We judge them. We have a good time. So we talked about this one when it came out, but I just thought it would be fun to look back over you know, when these releases have been out for a little while. So this says, this was done in collaboration with Art Collective Mischief, M-S-C-H-F. The beauty brand Fenty introduced a lip gloss set that contains actual ketchup. For $25, the package consisted of six different packets. They were all identical in style, but you don't know, is the packet going to have Fenty lip gloss or was it going to have ketchup? <sighs> the whole theming was ketchup or makeup, right? Crazy. So I'm going to be using these blinged brushes. Blinged brushes sent me some really nice brushes. I'm very, very excited about them. So let's use this one. This is a F2. I'll link them and everything else down below in case you're curious or if I forget to say something. But the whole premise of this, I guess was supposed to be like fun. Am I going to get lip gloss or am I going to get ketchup? And while I saw the value in this for like from a creator standpoint, I thought it was very like TikTok appropriate. Like you're filming a video. Is this going to be ketchup or is this going to be lip gloss? But beyond that, I, I, I cannot get it. I cannot get it. Now, one of the things I was thinking about in doing this video is that 
these brands, maybe they're marketing geniuses. Are they marketing geniuses or are they, are, are they out here just creating nonsense, creating product products that are ridiculous? And it's like, there's got to be this line between, is this ridiculously genius? Because I mean, this, this product launched in March, no, I'm sorry, not March, August, I believe from Fenty, August of 2022. And here it is March of 2023. And we're still talking about it. Not just me, like I said, so many people overwhelmingly we're saying Fenty ketchup thing. Here's the downside with this too, because I know some people were like, well, it could be a way to try a few different of the Fenty Gloss Bomb shades, right? Because what if three of them, what if three of the little packets are Gloss Bombs and then you have these new Gloss Bomb colors, but they're in ketchup packets so how are you going to reseal that the only thing i could think was you open it up you don't need a whole ketchup packet full of gloss that's a lot of gloss right so you open up the packet you get the little bit of gloss you need you don't have an applicator or anything so you have to use your finger or you have to use an applicator from another product and then what do you do with the rest? You put it in a little Ziploc baggie, you seal it up, and you have like all these Ziploc baggies of glosses. What, what I will give credit to for Fenty, aside from the fact that we're still talking about this months later, is that it was $25, right? They didn't make it $100 or so. And for the creators who bought this, I think it, it was probably really fun. But I'm just very curious how many actual consumers were buying and enjoying this product. I don't think that many. And it was just such a weird concept because it wasn't a gloss bomb with a red tint that had the ketchup logo. Like it was in ketchup packets, kind of a mystery. You didn't know what you were going to get with this one. Okay, so please let me know, did you buy that Fenty ketchup thing? Did you try it? Did you watch other creators try it? Because I saw quite a few creators try it and I thought, you know, I was like, okay, like, let me see. Let me see what people are doing with, <laughs> with this. But another commenter brought up a collection that I completely forgot about. And that was this whole cheese inspired collection from Makeup Revolution. Now, listen, I love some cheese. Like, come on. I love cheese. Most people don't dislike cheese. It has, it has a large following of people that love cheese, cheese in all forms. But the, 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 the level of oddness, weirdness, and listen, I love, like, be weird. We're all different. Like, everybody's weird to some extent, right? I'm just looking for, like, what concealer brush I'm going to use. I think I'm just going to use my foundation brush, actually. But, but, but it was so poorly done for the people who love cheese. Makeup Revolution could have done something with the cheese inspired collection. I like food themed makeup. I think it's fun and playful. You know, of course I love luxury and sophistication, but you know, I think playful makeup is just that. It's there to have fun. And I think food makeup is a great way to have fun with makeup. You know, like different days, different vibes, different products, different themes. Like I can be, I can be about that. I can be about some cheese themed makeup, but I actually pulled up some photos for myself too. Cause I was like, I need a refresher on this. Now the thing that I thought was the cutest was the mouse sponge and the cheese sponge. I think that was so adorable and it was functional, right? Because a triangle cheese shaped sponge works. The mouse shaped sponge works. A lot of people could have that really like it. If the sponge was nice quality, use it and just have something really cute and fun with their makeup, right? But then 
we gotta talk about the rest of the collection because what? Okay, the one thing that I think really broke down the cheese collection to where people were like, what now? Is one, that highlighter. <laughs> the way they made it like a slice with two different sides was just weird because I don't know that it really felt fit a theme. Now listen, cheese highlighters could have been cute. You could have done mozzarella. You could have done different things, different fun things, right? But it just, everything else kind of felt like an afterthought past the sponge duo. Everything else kind of felt like an afterthought and like nobody planned it, you know? Like it just, they came up with the theme and they were like, sure, whatever, we'll go with it. And the thing is, when you have makeup or any product that is so themed, you need to have the details right. And the palette was just weird. It was like they just put in some cheese names and they didn't even think about the names and the shades and the flow of the palette or anything. There were just haphazard yellows and blues and reds and beiges thrown in a palette. And like I said, when you have brands out here like Glamlight, who are doing food themed makeup and they're putting in thought. Now I understand that Makeup Revolution is a drugstore brand. I understand that. I understand the budget may be different, but that doesn't mean you couldn't have spent a few extra hours in, in, in the conference room just talking about this collection because you yeah, y'all get what I'm saying. We're on the same page, right? This was not planned out, not executed well, zero thought whatsoever put into this collection. All right, now here is where I'm going to have a bit of an unpopular opinion, I think. And somebody commented and said one of the weirdest things that they remember is the Benefit and Crocs collab. Now, let me just tell you, Crocs serve a purpose. Now, I'm not a major croc lover and then I own several pair, but listen, I enjoy nature. I enjoy the outdoors and your girl's living down in the south of the United States. We got water moccasins and all kinds of stuff. So, you don't want to wear flip-flops if you're going down to a lake and there's a lot of grassy area because your toe might get bit buy a copperhead, buy a water moccasin. You know what I mean? So you need a shoe that can get wet when you're going down to the lake or the river. I personally prefer a river. You want to have something closed toe and you want something that can also get wet. You can't have a flip flop. So what is the footwear that sounds like it was made for that? Crocs. I love my Crocs and I'm not ashamed to say it. I have some glitter ones and if I was quick enough, I would have bought the Crocs Benefit collab because those Crocs were adorable and it would have met functionality and makeup in one. <laughs> It would have met it in one. I would have bought them, but they sold out so fast because they had like the, the croc, the traditional croc that was like pink and shimmery. It wasn't their glitter ones like the glitter ones I have, but it was cute. I understand it sounded weird, but I actually thought it was really fun to see like, you know, crocs are having their moment. And for a major brand like Benefit to team up with Crocs, I thought that was so cute. I would have bought the sandal pair too. I think that was fun. My niece actually just had a birthday and I bought her some pink rainbow glitter Crocs and they're freaking adorable. So there, there is my confession, y'all. I wear Crocs from time to time. Now I'm not planning my outfit around a Croc. Like, what am I gonna wear? Oh, I can't wait to wear my Crocs today. But when you need to wear a Croc, you need to wear a Croc and they serve their purpose. And I'm so sad that I missed out on the Benefit Crocs. I wish they would restock. I wish I was fast enough. I wish I would have snatched them up. 
Okay, brows are boring. I'm gonna fill in my brows. I'm gonna use my Morphe Micro Brow. I'm gonna use my NYX Lift and Snatch. And I am going to, you know, I'm just gonna use my Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination. I'm testing out other brow glues, but I don't wanna play today. I wanna use the good stuff. So let me fill in my brows and I will be right back. Okay, I am going to prime my eyes for shadow with my Sigma Ignite Eye Primer. And I am going to be using my Heather Austin Adept Cosmetics Collaboration Palette. <laughs> I want to play with this. So let's talk about the Applebee's Lip Gloss Collaboration that they did with Winky Lux. That's right, an Applebee's Lip Gloss. So this was all inspired by like Hot Wings sauces. You heard it right hot wings. And this was another one that I saw lots of people interested in this one actually. And I mean, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat chicken wings, but I love a good sauce. Like put some sauce on some other things. I will, I will eat it. Not on chicken, but on other things. So I understand that barbecue sauce, buffalo, buffalo hot sauce, honey mustard sauce, like I, I understand the appeal of those sauces, but do I want hot buffalo sauce on my lips all day as a lip gloss? Absolutely not. The pause was for dramatic effect. There is no pause in my mind. The answer is absolutely not. I do not want wing sauce on my lips. Now, I love a good scented gloss. I may be like, hmm, cherry lip gloss? Absolutely. I love scented makeup, but I've never thought, I just, you know, next time I go to the wing stop down the corner, I should get extra sauce so I can just rub it on my lips. It, it, it's, it's, it's funny though. It's funny though. And Winky Lux. It's a brand that I, I would never have expected. Uh, I mean, I would expect that from Hip Dot and Trust. We're going to talk about Hip Dot here in a minute. But Winky Lux is like a drugstore makeup brand because I see them at Target all, their, all the time. And a lot of their packaging has like floral on it, right? Like they kind of were known for their rose blushes and stuff like that. So for them to do an Applebee's collab was like, okay. And even though it wasn't for me, I was kind of thinking like maybe Winky Lux is going to do something different. They're going to step outside of their kind of a super floral vibe and they're going to start doing other types of products. But I really haven't seen that. It was like this one-off Applebee's chicken wings lip gloss that left most of us a little confused. Now, when I talked about it in my judging new makeup, a lot of y'all were telling me it's because there's like this Applebee's song. And I, when I tell y'all I was shaken in my boots when I found out that that was a, an actual song. Like I thought it was like just a TikTok sound. Um, I did not realize it was like a song song and people were just clipping it for these TikTok dances. But here nor there, the lip glosses sold out. So once again, I have to ask, was this weird, crazy, silly nonsense, very unserious like I thought, or was it actually a marketing genius move? You tell me what you think. Okay, let's talk about the MAC Sims palette. I don't play the Sims, so I'll give you my perspective as a non-player, but first I want to read you this that MAC had to say about this Sims palette from MAC. It says, this was a pre-existing palette. A collection of shadows was the Solar Glow Times 9 palette. But this was a Sims focused rebrand. It was a US only release at the time. I don't know if it went to other countries, but it's, listen, this is what's, this is what's super weird. And I think what really made Sims fans upset, it, Max said, 
Given the broad, diverse community of Sims fans, we wanted the shades and textures in the collection to appeal to everyone, whether they're makeup beginners or artistry gurus. Looking at the shades, I saw so much criticism for the palette saying it doesn't fit all skin tones. It doesn't fit all Sims users. So, so some other criticism was that it was just the box that had the logo and it, it wasn't like, it wasn't like a special palette. It was just a box. It was just a box. It was just a box of mid-tone shades and one deep shade. So as a non-Sims player, the box of the palette is kind of what I personally would think of when somebody says, oh, there's going to be Sims makeup. That would kind of be my initial thought. I'm like, okay, Sims, having never played the game, I know that it's usually like white and I knew a royal blue and then I knew like that green little jewel that goes above the characters. Because even though I don't play the game, like I, I've seen people play it. I see people post things online. I mean, it's a very popular game, right? Like it's a very popular game. So the fact that MAC, a makeup artist brand, didn't do something creative and fun, but just took a pre-existing palette and stuck it in a Sims box was very insulting to the fans of the game. And listen, I get it. If you've been at my channel long enough to see me rant and rave about the insane makeup revolution Game of Thrones collection, like I get it. I get when you love something, you want it to be well represented. And I don't even think that most people would have been upset if it wouldn't have been like the perfect representation of the game. But it's like you couldn't have given the palette a royal blue, a kind of light bright green, a white, a black. Like you couldn't have, you couldn't have done the bare minimum for the palette. And I understand, like, listen, I'm right there with you. Several of y'all commented that, Max Sims, Max Sims, Max Sims. And several of my creator friends commented that same thing. I did want to say their names because I didn't, you know, ask permission when I asked the question, like, can I publicly, like, say who posted the question or who gave me the, um, who gave me the, the makeup that was cringe. <laughs> So I'll just say a lot of y'all were upset by that one and I understand. I would love to know again with all of these releases. I don't love the word cash grab because I feel like all businesses are there to make money. Every single business, every single for-profit business is there to make money. So I always hate when people throw away, throw around the term cash grab because it's a business. Yes, they're trying to get your money. Your grocery store, your local grocery store, your local coffee shop, where you get your oil changed, uh, everybody. Everybody's trying to, to make money. Makeup brands not, ex not, not excluded from that. But I really, really, really am like, okay, at least with most things that I see called, get called a cash grab, there is some thought put into it, you know, like, yeah, these brands, they're trying to latch on to what's popular to put it out because they want to make money. They got bills to pay. But this one, I'm like, Mac, with all your resources, with everything you can do, you took an existing palette and you put it in a box. I know people were mad at Pat McGrath for putting a sticker on an existing palette for Star Wars. I wasn't. I wasn't. I knew what I was getting into when I bought it. And at least there was a sticker on the palette. Mac didn't even put Sam's sticker on the front of it. You know, like, whatever less than the bare minimum is, 
that's what MAC did. Okay, I'm gonna use my Huda Beauty Creamy Coal Liner in Very Brown. Let's talk about the absolute scam. What my opinion was an absolute scam. Let me rephrase that. Of the Becca Zero Pigment Foundation. You heard that right, folks. Becca Zero Pigment Foundation. This essentially was a hydrating mattifying primer. Becca marketed this as a foundation with zero pigment, a clear foundation. This, this was a product that had hyaluronic acid, so it was supposed to blur and mattify a little bit. A skincare makeup hybrid, if you will. What every other brand on the market calls a primer. Most, I don't know if I should say most, a lot of the primers that we see coming out over the past few years have skincare ingredients in them. Hyaluronic acid, things like that. You know, my current favorite is the Pore Refrain Glow Recipe. It's got different ingredients in their skincare. And the Becca one was supposed to kind of blur and mattify what we would call a primer, right? But they marketed it as a zero pigment foundation for no makeup makeup. Listen, I've said it once. I'll say it before. I'll say it again because it's true. You want a completely natural look? Go wash your face. I get it. Not everybody wants makeup like I do. I get that. That's cool. We should all wear the makeup we want to wear. But this whole zero pigment foundation was just insane. Like, it was a little insane. And I know there's going to be somebody in the comments that was like, Heather, I love it. That's wonderful. I'm so happy for you. You love it. I love it for you. That's not for me, though. That is not for me. And... I did not see positivity coming from this because people were like, y'all think, like, y'all think we don't have two thoughts to put together. Y'all think we don't know that this is a hyaluronic acid moisturizing mattifying primer. Like, you zero pigment foundation, Becca, really? And I saw when it first released, of course, a bunch of creators buying it, testing it. That's what, that's what those of us who are review makeup, that's what we're here for. Now, I can't buy and test and try everything, but I hope to test things out so that if I test 10 palettes, I can show you how those 10 palettes perform. I can create looks with those palettes. I can tell you my thoughts so that maybe if you were looking at these palettes, you can say, you know what, Th those 10 palettes that Heather reviewed, none of those are for me, so I'm going to save my money. Or, you know what, I was really interested in that one palette. I watched some reviews on it. Now I want to try it. Or now I want to shop my stash. Or now, you know, like, so makeup reviewers, we're here to do that. To buy these things. Sometimes these things like this nonsense zero pigment foundation. Like, just call it a primer. But they didn't want to do that because who's going to be trying their primer? Not very many people. You say it's a zero pigment foundation and then everybody's like, what now? What now? Uh, I did not buy it, but I was happy to see lots of creators buy it. And mostly the consensus was, this is a very mediocre primer. If you want the effect that this gives, go to the primers. You're going to find an array and you're going to find something better and you're going to find something that you like. Just mix up your skincare. Utter nonsense. Utter nonsense. And I read a couple of articles actually from magazine editors and stuff who were like, this is wonderful. And I'm like, what? How is this wonderful? Now listen, I, before I go in with my lid shade, I'm going to put down my Cultura, Cultura Ultra Matte Gel Liner from Melt. I want to use this as a base for my shadow. Okay, the other thing I saw several people comment was pH or color changing makeup products. Now, I've tried a few. I've tried a few. If you go on my TikTok, 
my Instagram reels. A lot of times I will post things as shorts here on YouTube, but on TikTok and Instagram, I can just post a little bit longer than one minute content. And I've tried some of the color changing things. I tried uh, a blush from you from yeah, Youthphoria. I was just like, what's what's the name of the brand? What's the name of the brand? Youthphoria. And I didn't like that one. I tried one from Lipstick Queen. Oh, let me show you the shade I'm using. You know, I've tried some here and there. And here's the thing. Most of those color changing pH type products are going to change the same shade. They're going to change to be the same shade. It's usually a pinky tone. It warms up on your skin and it changes. And I think it can be fun. Like I say in my videos, I'm all about the fun with makeup. Not taking things too seriously. Doing what you enjoy. Having fun with it. You know, like I get comments a lot <laughs> of people in my comment section telling me I could never wear that makeup and you know what that's fine but nobody's kicked me out of the grocery store yet for going in with two different eye looks you know like I, I haven't been banned from Walmart <laughs> or anything and I don't care either way like I wear my makeup for me and I think the color changing products I mean they're a bit gimmicky but I do think they can be fun. Is it something that I want and that I'm reaching for and then I'm like, oh my gosh, these are my favorites? No, I think some of them can be terrible. Some of them can be nice. Like I had a hard candy uh, color changing blush and I thought it was fun. You know, it's fun. It goes on clear and then it turns pink on your cheeks. And I especially think for people who are younger, you know, maybe 16, getting into makeup, playing with makeup. If I were at Walmart and I saw a hard candy blush for five bucks and it was like goes on clear and changes color on your skin tone, I would have loved that. I would have loved that. I would have thought that is so fun. So I realized that for most of these color changing products, I'm not really the target demographic. You see all this fallout I'm getting? It's because I'm I'm really picking up a lot on my brush and I'm really packing it on. So don't be concerned about this fallout. You see, it's my technique and I don't care. I'm going to brush the fallout away, but I kind of want this chunky textured look on my lid today. So I'm really picking up just a ton of product on this brush that's a little more like on the fluffy side it's not super fluffy but it's definitely not dense so don't worry about the fallout that's me that's my technique so i can get the desired result i want but i will say going back to the color changing blush now if that is a product that you're interested in trying something color changing just to have a little fun see what the see what kind of the the fuss is all about with them I wouldn't recommend getting a Tarte or a high-end brand on these different brands that make the products. I would recommend starting with a hard candy, something like that, something under $20. See if you like it. And then if you find yourself going, you know, that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun to do these color changing blushes. I enjoy that in my makeup routine. Then, then sure, look for some more. But I will say the ones I try, they usually lean the way they're marketed. Like goes from clear to pink, it's probably going to be a pink. Goes from clear to plum, it's usually going to go from clear to plum. Um, because it's just as soon as it gets that warmth from your skin, it's just kind of activating that color change. So I definitely see that those can be gimmicky and like, oh, who who asked for this? But I can also see where they're, you know, just fun and playful. I'm going to do liner and mascara and a lash and then I'll come back because we have more to talk about. We got to do blush, bronzer, lips, all that stuff. And um, I wanna, I wanna, I've want i got some more thoughts and products to share. All right, before we get in to more 
weird makeup launches. I don't even know, like some of these, I'm like, would you even call these makeup launches? They're just like odd, right? But uh, that was, this is my eye look. I used my Heather Austin Adept palette. I did hear from Adept that this is officially low stock. I do not know if there will be a restock. I don't know, I don't know, but it is low in stock. And I put on my BK Beauty and Risa Does Makeup Vegas False Lashes. Now I'm gonna use my Jaclyn Cosmetics bronzer in top down. I'm gonna use my Juvia's Place Blushed Volume One. I'm gonna use my Bella Beauty Bar Oracle Chrome Highlighter Palette. I think this one is available for pre-order. I'm gonna use my ABH Raisin Lip Liner and my Catrice Powerful 5 Lip Care in Sweet Cherry. So that's what I'm gonna put on while we talk about the Cheetos Bronzer. I thought maybe that would be, <laughs> That would be appropriate to talk about while I bronze up the skin because, listen, the fact that there is a Cheetos makeup, because we did see a Cheetos makeup collab. I'm not talking about that one specifically. There was like an eyeshadow palette and stuff. I'm talking about the Cheetos bronzer that I'm showing you on the screen now. It was a bronzer that was orange the color of Cheetos who and why are we using that? Now, a Cheetos eyeshadow palette, yes. Orange eyeshadow is so beautiful. I love a good orange eyeshadow. Orange blush, orange lipstick, beautiful. Like, orange makeup, gorgeous. But I feel like so many people don't want a weird bronzer look. They don't want an orange bronzer. They may want a warm toned bronzer, yeah, to warm up the skin, but not Cheeto orange. And who doesn't love Cheetos? Flaming Hot Cheetos, like sure. But Cheetos gave a product that was I don't want to say unusable because if you want to use an orange bronzer, like go for it. More power to you. Makeup, creative outlet. I get it. But for the most part, I don't think people are wanting an orange bronzer. Like just straight up bronzing with an orange powder. So of all the things for Cheeto to create... A bronzer that is Cheeto orange is bizarre, bizarre. Now I can get behind buying makeup that you don't necessarily want to use, but that you want to display. Makeup as a decoration. I know a lot of people are against that. I'm for it. If you wanna buy makeup and you're like, I don't wanna use it, the packaging's cute, I love it. I wanna set it up right here. That's fun, but for the most part, I think makeup should be fun packaging and good product inside. You shouldn't really have to choose one or the other because there are so many brands out here who are doing both. They're giving us fun vibes packaging with actually useful makeup. Now, whether you wanna use it or not, that is completely your choice, but in my opinion, it should be usable. And the Cheetos bronzer, it's, it's one of those that it's like, no, <laughs> not, 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 no. So this is volume one. And I just want to go into this shade right up here. And for good reason, for good reason, the Cheetos bronzer got roasted because it's like, you could have done anything but you chose violence with this bronzer. You chose violence. <laughs> okay, so what I really want to hear from y'all is do you think these brands, do you think this is good marketing? I mean, I think it really just depends. There are some things like the Becca Zero Pigment Foundation, like the makeup revolution cheese collection that I'm like, you know, 
it it wasn't that serious it wasn't that serious it was silly i i wasn't buying it but i know there are people who are buying it the 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 becca zero foundation thing like it had people talking for a while but the, but but are they talking in a good way you know we always hear sorry i'm just looking for a brush we always hear like no press is bad press i tend to disagree with that I tend to disagree with that, um, but, you know, like the Fenty gloss ketchup thing, we're, we're still talking about it months later, right? But are we talking about it in a good way? No, but Fenty Beauty is a brand that can stand alone. They have amazing products. So a brand like that can afford to put out a silly product, right? Whereas Becca has since shut down. So it's like, were the funds that were allocated on marketing and producing this zero pigment foundation, would it have been better to put out a good product that people wanted? And then maybe the brand wouldn't be shutting down right now. I don't know. This is not a video to bash any of these brands. This is a video to just discuss, talk, have some fun, hear from y'all, not to necessarily be like, these brands are terrible. They put out silly stuff. We hate them. That's not the goal of this video. So I would love to know your thoughts on these. Are these brands just really, really out here doing the best, creating genius marketing strategies or nah? And I can do another video like this because I only talked about maybe half of the products I had on my list. I just thought I would talk about as many as I could while we were getting ready together. And if y'all like this, I can definitely do another video and we can talk about the other things that I wanted to talk about. Again, this video is all in good fun. If I said something was silly and ridiculous and I didn't like it and it's your favorite product, that's wonderful. I don't think you're silly or ridiculous. I think we should all buy the makeup we want to buy, enjoy the products that we want to enjoy. I don't care how you spend your money shouldn't care how I spend my money, shouldn't care how Julie Sue down the street spends her money. You know, everybody should do what they want to do. I am loving my makeup look. I have a lot of things going on, a lot of things to do today, but I enjoyed sitting down with y'all talking about makeup marketing. Thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe. Let me know if you want to see another video like this. We could definitely do that in the future. I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll see you soon. Bye.